Hi everybody, it's Miss Samantha, the ecology and gardening teacher at Low Country Montessori School. And as you know, it's been pretty quiet here since last spring when students stopped coming to school due to the coronavirus. So um, the butterflies don't seem to mind. They like the peace and there's lots of birds here. So what to do about this situation? I decided that um, since I'm in graduate school right now, getting my master's degree in conservation biology, that um, I had to do some research. So I decided to do something, some research about things happening here on our campus to show what kind of species are coming here to take advantage of this amazing wildlife habitat we've created over the last few years. And what I decided to do, sorry, we live um, under the um, jets from the Air Force and so they're just flying by. questions about um, plants in general but specifically about milkweed and um, I want to know what plants are best for the monarch butterfly which um, is an endangered species its numbers have plummeted recently unfortunately um, we use a lot more um, herbicides than we used to even just 10 years ago an herbicide is a chemical that kills a plant and it's used to kill weeds. Um, and you used to not be able to use it when you were growing food because you would kill the plants you were growing for food. Um, but now they have genetically engineered plants that can be sprayed with a poison that kills every plant except for the plant that you're growing. Um, so that's really convenient for a lot of farmers, but unfortunately that means that everything's getting sprayed and so there's no longer um, patches of milkweed surrounding every farm field and on the edge of every highway and um, all those places that used to be just patches of wildflowers and weeds that butterflies reproduced and laid their eggs on, now there's just nothing. They're maintained with chemical herbicides and they're just killing everything um, to make it look neat and tidy but there's consequences to that and um, one of those consequences is that the monarch population decreased by 70 percent um, within 20 years which is drastic um, so what's happened is all kinds of wonderful people like um, you and me and the students here at Low Country Montessori decided well we'll plant milkweed for the monarchs since it's no longer in the places it used to be we're going to create gardens and we're going to make habitat ourselves and so that's what we've done it's taken a long time um, we've been planting milkweed for three years and um, it's working the monarchs are coming but what I want to know specifically is what are the best plants for me to plant because you have native species of milkweed and then you have non-native species of milkweed and usually native species are the best but um, sometimes they're not as easy to grow as um, the non-native so reasons for that is um, one could be that it is getting hotter every year um, so some of the plants that used to grow really well here have a little bit of a hard time um, so here on our campus it's very sunny which is nice the butterflies like the Sun um, but we have only two species of milkweed that grow really well here so one is called Asclepius tuberosa and the other is called Asclepius curvaceae and um, those two really like the Sun and then we have two more and their common names are aquatic milkweed and swamp milkweed so judging from their names you can probably guess that 
they like to be in a very wet place, um, which is something we don't really have here on campus. So although we do have um, both of those species, we have very few plants. We have about five that I've been able to keep alive. And the rest are all the other two species, which have common names of um, tropical milkweed and then butterfly milkweed or butterfly weed, as people like to call it. And so what I am doing is I'm taking data. Here is my data sheet and I'm going to each milkweed flower and I am measuring how tall it is, whether it has buds, flowers, or seed pods, um, what condition it is in, and how much of it has already been eaten by herbivores. Herbivore herbivores are creatures that eat plants. They're the opposite of a carnivore, which is a creature that eats meat. Um, and then I'm also recording how many other milkweed plants are near that plant. What species is it? How many stems does it have? And what other creatures are on that plant? So you would be amazed how many creatures are on one milkweed plant. I have this whole book that I have been studying um, and it is just for identifying different species and I've been studying it and still there's all kinds of things that I don't know what they are that are on these plants. So when I was um, your age growing up, I thought that everybody knew everything about everything because you go to the library and there's millions of books and you can get on the internet and find out answers to so many questions um, but the truth is that there's still a lot that nobody knows and so we still need scientists to um, answer questions and find out what's happening in the natural world and insects are um, one of the largest types of creatures present on earth when I say large I don't mean that they are large as individuals, but there's so many of them that if you added up their total weight of body mass, it would be more than the total weight of humans um, and all other large animals combined. So there are trillions of insects in the world and a lot of them are really hard to identify and a lot of them are really tiny. So I also have this hand lens that I use to magnify things to count monarch eggs, which are the size of the head of a pen. And I also count all the different um, stages of caterpillar that I find on the plant and if I see any adult butterflies on the plant as well as all the other insects present. And I am comparing all of this data at the end to try to see which plants are preferred by the female monarchs to lay their eggs on. So if I find that one species has more eggs laid on it than the other species, that will help me determine which type of plant I want to plant more of here in the future. Um, because we want to plant more. So as soon as you come back to school, I'll be waiting for you so that we can get planting. And until then, I'm going to keep collecting my data and um, I will be sharing it with you. And hopefully when you come back, if you're interested, let me know and um, you can help me collect data and we can continue to add to this citizen science project which means that citizens just like you and me all over the world are making the effort to become scientists by collecting data and sending their data into different universities around the world so that all that data can be analyzed together so not only will we find out what the butterflies are doing here at Low Country Montessori but we can find out when they're here are they going from here then to Mexico or, or are they going from here to Florida or are they going from here up to Minnesota and um, what time do they like to be here? What plants do they like here? Because butterflies fly all over the world. They don't stay here. Um, so we want to know when they're coming here, why they're coming here and what they need when they do come here. So there's all kinds of 
questions that we still have to answer and hopefully you can help me um, find the answers to some of those questions. Um, so send me a comment, tell me what you think about being a citizen scientist, if that is something you are interested in. So if you are interested in doing citizen science, you don't have to um, be at the school to do that. That is something you can do from home if you have milkweed planted or if you know a place where milkweed grows near you. And you can contribute your information to the monarch larva monitoring project and all that data um, will be put into one database so if you're interested let me know and i can share that information with you and until then i hope you all the best i hope you are enjoying the beautiful weather this fall and that you are all healthy and strong see you soon